We have Michael Friedlander here in our studios here in Hong Kong. He's a former nuclear power plant engineer, and he's here to help us understand what the category is and what the repercussions are. Michael, thank you very much for being here. When we hear level three and serious incident, what exactly does that mean? How concerned should we be? Well, the, the rating scale from a zero to a seven, as you indicated, um, a three puts you pretty much in the middle, and the differentiation between a three and a four, a three and a four differentiates between things that are going on within the property boundary, within the power plant itself, which are largely contained to issues going on in the plant. People outside the plant boundary really shouldn't necessarily worry about what you know, the, what's going on in the plant won't affect them. Once you go to a four, what it means is what's going on in the plant could potentially expand beyond the plant boundary. So it's a very significant event, but it's limited to its effect inside the plant. So the bright spot, if we can see a bright spot in this, is that it's contained at least to that area. But the issue is for that the for the moment, the, the investigators don't know exactly where this leak is coming from. They That's think that it's from one of these storage tanks. But if they don't know where the leak is, how do they go about finding it? And, and how delicate a situation is this? It, it's a very significant issue that you bring up because the the, the contamination is, is extremely, extremely high. And so all of this investigation as well as remediation is going to have to be done with remote because uh, it, it's just too highly radioactive for really people to get in there at a very close range and actually do the work. So it's going to use a lot of robotics and a lot of uh, remote cameras. Now it's two and a half years since this mm -hmm. incident so obviously they need to figure out how to contain this yes. and we've got this leak that we've been notified about um, today mm -hmm. and then we've also learned about some of that contaminated water, the radioactive water, seeping into the groundwater and then Correct. going into the ocean. I mean, this mm -hmm. is something we've been reporting uh, the past couple of days. For our international viewers, international consumers, mm -hmm. how concerned should we be about seafood coming mm -hmm. from Japan? Well, it's certainly something that uh, people should take into consideration. Um, there, there is monitoring going on. The Japanese authorities and the World Health Organization do have uh, sit, um, programs in place to monitor it. But again, as you indicated earlier, we don't know the extent of the leakage that's going on. We don't know how closely it's being monitored, and we don't know how, how far out the effects have gone out into the ocean. Uh, it's certainly something that needs to be taken a very serious so look at. So at this point, it's, it's still a big question big mark question about mark. how, whether or not uh, any of the marine animals or wildlife well, or, or, or seafood is affected. Well, we know for a fact that there is because there's been samples that have been taken that have demonstrated that uh, some of the sea life has high levels of contamination, higher than, than normal, norm, what we'd normally expect to see. Um, the question is, is how far out has that gotten? Is it, is it restricted to the plant boundaries? Or has it actually gone out into the fishing areas? Okay, Michael Friedlander, thank you very much for your expertise. We really appreciate it today. My pleasure.